to the Trading Market Technicals Morning Call video for Tuesday, February 19th. What a week last week was. Options expiration week and we absolutely went nowhere. Markets were uh, up. S&P was up 15.18, close 15.17, up 15.19, close 15.20. You get the picture. No volatility at all. The lowest levels in over 17 years. And Max Payne, we did a little market analysis on Friday, and Max Payne indicated to us that a slightly down to flat market is really what's going to produce Max Payne. And sure enough, that's exactly what we got. Uh, terrible, terrible market environment. Uh, if, of course, if you're a long-term investor or a position trader and just looking to ride out uh, the current trend, you're doing fantastic. But if you're a swing trader and or a day trader, day uh, um, um you're having a little bit of a tough time because there's actually a little bit to do uh, during the course of the trading day. And finding catalysts is really what you need to be doing right now. Um, so Friday's, Friday expiration was absolutely awful. The currency markets are just stagnant right now, doing absolutely nothing, just sitting in these ranges uh, looking for a breakout, looking for some sort of direction. Um, so we're, what we do in this low-risk environment here is that we want to reduce our share size. We want to trade less until volatility begins to pick up. And it's only a matter of time. Uh, we've sat, sat in front of the mic here many days stating that uh, markets just can't go up like this uh, and grind higher. Markets can do whatever it wants to, uh, whether it be me or saying that markets are coming in or not. So picking tops and picking bottoms are going to be really a loser's losing proposition. Um, so what we do in this low volatility environment is try to look for the best trade setups. And as you can see here on the board, if you look at on Friday, down 11, up 2, down 2, down 11, up 9. Now we did get a little bit of a sell-off um, intraday, and I mean ever so slightly in the markets, they ran them back up again into the close. Uh, if you can see here, here's the gains and losses for the week for the sectors. Total mixed bag, but really ever so slightly gains and losses. So nothing really has happened. Beginning since the beginning of January, we have gapped up and have grinded higher. Now, I do mention when volatility does pick in and when the time comes that we do get a little bit of a sell-off, you could see um, a good month's gains wiped out in three or four days. And that's just what happens. Um, without any type of pullback in the zigzag formation, um, markets are all one-sided. We have sentiment at extreme highs, and we are overbought in our indicators. However, that is not a sell signal to be looking to sell the top here. We need price to confirm that we are moving lower, making lower lows and lower highs. Until that happens, we trade the best setups we can, sit on our hands, and wait and keep the pallets dry until the markets are starting to move. Now, um, in, this, in this market commentary, I'm looking at uh, world markets, I'm looking at weekly charts, and what I do notice in the world markets, and I can show that to you, and I'll show that to you in a moment, some of the world markets are starting to uh, roll over and um, confirm, are in confirmed downtrends, and I'll get into that in a moment. But let me just run through um, some of our uh, indices as you can see here, gold just got crushed last week. Russell up with the biggest gainer out of all the sectors that we follow. Oil actually did not too bad. And then, of course, Dow Jones was down, eked out a small loss. NASDAQ geeked out a small loss. S&P up and the mid caps up. As you can see here, these are the two sectors that you really want to start looking at. Dollar also gained a little bit of momentum, but again, still sitting in that descending triangle, if you will, and also we have a head and shoulders pattern. So we have two bearish patterns here, but um, have, have yet to either break to the upside and or downside. So dollar is going to be interesting to see what happens this week as well. Okay, As, as far as the uh, risk currencies are concerned, the risk high yielding currencies, the Aussie dollar, the New Zealand dollar, we want to see um, uh, the Canadian dollar. We want to see what happens to them because as of right now, they just continue to drift higher, um, which really shouldn't be the case, but it is what it is, and uh, let's just see what happens until um, we get some confirmation of some risk off. We, I have signs all over the place, but um, uh, nothing is happening here. So until we start breaking lower, then um, then we can really get excited to the downside. Okay. So now um, here's the uh, the indices. Take a look at the sectors. Excuse me. Industrial goods, consumer goods, financials, all up. Utilities, t basic materials, technologies lower. Healthcare lower. So the healthcare and utilities, which are um, safe haven, right? Uh, defensive uh, sectors is actually um, 
losing its luster a little bit and actually rolling right back into our financials and uh, consumer goods, industrial goods. So, so again, just these are just something to keep an eye on. Uh, back to the performance, as you can see here from last week. Really, if you look at this, we have just a mixed bag, ever so slightly up and down gains here. So this is something that I'm going to be watching really closely coming uh, this week to see what happens. Now, options expirations out of the way. Um, and now we're coming to the end of the month. We have this week and next week, and then um, we start March again. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the coming days. Again, we need a catalyst. Without selling and vo without volatility, it really is useless to um, to really be uh, quite active in this market. Bullish percent, still hanging above the uh, 8. We are overbought, as you can see here. And all these um, these uh, um, uh, in the case, I'm going to show you, nothing really has changed, uh, but I do want to show them to you just to kind of keep you up to date. We have the new new lows, new highs. As you can see here, when we do get elevated here, here we start to really roll over. When we get lower down here below 100, anything above 100 is bullish. So we're still above 100, and uh, we're really not highly elevated here back into this 800, what would warn us. So we still have room to run here. Uh, we also have our NIMO. NIMO has done nothing in the whole month of February. Uh, up or down, negative 6, plus 6, negative 10, plus 10. So really, room to run to the upside before we're overbought, room to really move lower before we're oversold. So there is room on either side here. Uh, just make note of that. Now, the NASI. The NASI has yet to confirm a sell signal. We have the summation index plotted with the 5.3 overlay, stochastics. It has yet to break down. Um, so we have been on a buy signal since late November, and this is still yet yet to break down now. The New York Stock Exchange summation index is something different. We are on a sell signal, but look at what happened. What's happening here? We could get a little bit of a whipsaw. We have one big up week. This would turn back up again. But again, look at this. Over, uh, we're highly uh, overbought on our CCI, our RSI, and our stochastics here are reading overbought, and they have turned. So this has produced a sell signal in the NASI, uh, and this is a great indicator when you're working with a weekly chart. So this is something that we'll look at at the end of the week again. S&P 50-day above the 50-day. Um, I like to see a break low below 80. This is the 80 spot. Once it breaks below 80, this could be another good warning sign that the market has topped again. So that's something that we want to look at during the course of the week as well. Same here. See how elevated we are. We're at these levels. We need to break below this 400. And then um, we could be seeing something, uh, some, hey, uh, stocks are starting to break down below the 200-day moving average. That is also something to take an eye on. Let's take a look at our risk on um, Russell versus the uh, JNK. And as you can see here, we had this big market sell-off here. We had a sell-off here. We had a little sell-off. And we are still below this uh, area here. Still waiting to see what happens here. Again, these are just stocks uh, and uh, um, indices to warn the trader and say, hey, we have a bunch of red flags out here. All you need is one set, one, something to happen negatively, and then everybody's going to be running for the exits. Now, we'll see what happens here in the coming weeks, uh, in the coming days, but I do see risk off. Now, this could continue for another few weeks, and as you can see, we've been talking about being overboard since January, and we are still overboard, but again, that is not a sell signal to be looking at top, uh, to, um, to start shorting the markets here. Okay, so take a look at our tick chart. As you can see here, really we backed off a little bit. So again, we have a room to run to the upside. And I think that this market wants to test the 1550. That's our uh, mid-pivot range. And then, of course, the all-time high of 1575. I just think that the, this is where the market wants to go. Um, and without it, um, I, I, I just, uh, I'd rather get there now and get it over with before we could just continue to grind higher in this low volatility environment. Okay, now speaking of that, let's take a look at our VIX. Um, I want to show you, do I have the VIX? Yes, I do. Here we go. VIX, nothing, absolutely nothing, doji, and we are sitting on the lows, 17-year lows. So we'll see what happens if we get some volatility picking up here. Um, extreme, extreme bullish sentiment out there, guys. No fear at all. And if you look at our CBOE put call, um, nobody's buying protection. No one. And actually, we actually uh, dipped lower on Thursday, popped up ever so slightly at 88. So um, this is actually bullish for the market. So we have not um, seen any fear coming into the markets at all. So there's, uh, there's a lot of... Um, 
uh, if you will, uh, market participants not worried about the market at all. So that also is a contrarian to be, be very cautious here with the markets, okay? All right, so enough of the indicators. Let's take a look at the world markets here. Um, our world markets, very interesting. We like to see everything um, trade in tandem, right? We like to see bullish configuration in our indicators. We want to see price moving higher, and we want to see our counterparts actually moving higher, right? Our Asian counterparts, our European counterparts, we want to make sure that they're also moving higher. And and yes, and as you can see here, this is the S&P in red, right? S&P, we have the FTSE, we have the DAX, with the French CAC here, and then we have the Toronto, our cousins up north, our uh, Canadian brother. Um, but if you will, if you look at what's happening here, we have confirmed downtrends now in the German DAX and in the French CAC. Now, we are here Right, and this is the London FTSE also starting to roll over. We have our um, um, Canadian Toronto exchange also rolling over. So we have a bunch of mixed results here um, le uh, next last week. The week before, we were actually lower. Now, um, French, Germany, Spain, they're all in confirmed downtrends. Italy is ready to uh, start to roll over as well. Okay, so now you have um, Europe. That's starting to roll over. Brazil has definitely confirmed and is in a downtrend. And then, of course, again, Canada is actually starting to roll over. So th that's telling me, hey, wait a minute. If, if we're all moving as one here back in November, right, and even down here back in June, we all rolled up, we rolled over, and then we wouldn't move higher. Now, our, um, our counterparts here, our European counterparts and Asia are starting to roll over, and we're still sitting here strong. Um, I don't think the S&P would pull all of our, um, all of the other European indices higher. So that's a big word of caution here, guys. So just really be careful here. Um, again, if you're scalping, day trading, even uh, short-term swing trades really not going to affect you that much. But you want to know where this market is headed so you can be prepared during the trading day. Okay. Now let's go into our um, let's go into our indices. Here's the S and P overlay with our average true range, and as you can see, we are at the lows here. So I'm going to be watching this during the coming days and weeks to see if we if the average true range starts to pick up. That'll mean volatility to pick up, and we'll see what happens if we break down through this channel here. Okay. Just wanted to show that to you briefly. Monthly chart of the spiders, big big area. This is exactly the same chart of the S and P 500 cash. 1575 is this long-term trend line. 157 is the uh, is the spiders, and we're literally about six points away. I don't see as why we we couldn't um, we couldn't uh, uh, touch it. But look at the volume. Just really, just we lost all volume the whole month of February. Now we still have two weeks, but it's just absolutely terrible the way the volume has dried up, and that's also to me a warning sign. Here is the weekly chart of the spiders. As you can see here, we have this long-term trend line up, and within the trend line here, we have a little bit of, uh, if you want to call it a bearish rising wedge, we can call that a rising wedge. To me, it looks like it. Um, but again, bearish ri rising, rising wedge, excuse me, only breaks below 140, uh, and, conf and on a closing basis would confirm that bearish configuration. But right now, we're just still looking at um, a market that's trending higher, touching the lower trend line, breaking up higher, and actually breaking out of this on uh, last week. So we'll see what happens um, at the end of this week. Okay, here's a spider daily chart. One large uptrend channel uh, with a smaller parallel channel. We're within this channel range here. We broke out of this little consolidation. Now we have another three or four days of consolidation. And that's what's, that's what's really what kills us because you break up, you consolidate. You break up, you consolidate. You break up, you consolidate. And it's just really a terrible trading environment. Okay, um, this is to have that two spots where I'm looking for on a closing basis. And we actually hit that literally within a couple of pennies. 150, 150 actually we hit to, to a T. Uh, and this is what I was looking for. But we did not break lower and close lower. We actually bounced back up the last two hours of the day. Um, look at our indicators. They all started to roll over. But again, this is not a sell signal, guys. Just a warning sign here. Use caution. 150, 150 on a break. I'm still looking for on a closing basis. That would get me excited to the short side. And then, of course, the 149.80 is the other area where I'm looking for to break lower. Uh, and this 200 period will start to rise a little bit. So that'll come up probably here. And this is going to be a big area sometime this week if we do get a rollover. And if we, that would be really a large break um, for this type of environment. Okay, take a look at the 30-minute. 
Bowl in Japan started to tighten, and we did get that break lower, but look what happened. We came right back up towards the end of the day. So um, markets were spooked a little bit, and then we, we rolled right back up again. So really nothing in here. As you can see here, we have just literally been in a range for the last five, six days. You can look back here, range again for the last five, six days. So pick your spots. You can make money in this market, but if you looking to get aggressive, it's not going to happen. You're going to lose money. Take one, two, three trades a day until this market changes, until volatility begins to pick up. S&P 500 weekly, same thing. Just take a quick look at that. As you can see, overboard here, but I've yet to roll over. And our target line for S&P cash, same thing here, guys. 115, uh, excuse me, 1520 is resistance right now. Next target would be 1550, our mid-pivot resistance, and then, of course, the main pivot of 1575. You might want to write that down and, and uh, be uh, alert of see what happens to the upside. Uh, now, that doesn't mean you can't take a, a, a small short at 1550 if we run hard up there. Sure, but you have to have a tight stop because you're going against the trend. 1495 is going to be our, our um, break and close lower. First target is 1475. That's going to be in the S&P cash, if you're following that. Big rising wedge on the uh, hourly chart right from the 2nd of January, and our indicators are moving lower, as you can see here. So we do have some divergence from our 60-minute, but again, it has yet to roll over in price. Price needs to break lower, and that's what's going to pay us. 30 minute, as you can see here, just really terrible trading. As you can see, look what happened, pop up, and then now we're back in this uh, consolidation range. Same thing happened here back five, six days ago. So the whole month of January and February, we had several days up consolidation, up consolidation. So really a real bad trading environment right now. IWMs, as you can see, we're in this channel. Until it breaks this channel, it's, it's bullish. There's nothing wrong with this at all. We actually had volume actually increase a little bit. So risk on is still on until until otherwise noted. Uh, this is the area I'm looking at, 90, 80 on the break, and then, of course, our 20, and then, of course, this consolidation area here, this low uh, coming in at right around $89. Call it $89 here. Um, that's the area that I'm looking for for really a, con a confirmation breakdown. Okay, and our indicators are at its uh, are, are elevated, but again, have yet to roll over. XLF, this is going to be a good um, good spot here. I'm looking for to short the banks. It has not done so as of yet. So break below the 20 on a closing basis, a back test and fail, then I'll be looking for some of the banks to short. But right now, we are in a confirmed uptrend. We do have a big bearish rising wedge, but it has yet to break the lower trend line to get a confirmed sell signal. Diamonds, same thing. Diamonds are starting to show a little bit of weakness here. Uh, we are consolidating in this range. That doesn't mean that we can't break out. So we are holding above the 80, and we are above 1.5 uh, in our MACD. So again, guys, uh, just kind of we, we're, we're waiting to see what happens with price. Price needs to break higher. And our transports, our leader here, our leader is showing some good signs of relative uh, strength to the markets. Uh, we did break out, and then we came back in again. Watch the transports, watch copper, um, watch the Russell, watch the NASDAQ. These are three, four um, sectors that you should be looking at every single day during the trading day to find out um, if you have market strength or weakness, intraday market strength or weakness. A couple more, Apple. Uh, nothing more than a bare flag here. The last three weeks on this big lower, I think Apple has to capitulate before you really start getting long in the longer term. Now, if you're trading it, that's one thing. But if you're looking to um, establish a short, a, a long position in the short term, this is not the time. Okay, I'd like to see it break, believe it or not, 357, um, 352, 357 area would be the first area to start looking, even 380, 390, if you will, depending on your accumulation of share size, uh, I would be nibbling, but I would not be looking for anything above 400. Under 300, it would entice me to start looking and start building a position in Apple. That's the weekly chart. Uh, daily chart, as you can see here, just really, really weak, just really nothing going on here in this Apple at all. And, of course, the Qs um, held hostage to Apple. Same thing. Nothing really much of going on here. We're on a sideways consolidation. Either we break out or we start to break down again. Really not telling us much at all. But, again, not bearish. This is still – we're just holding sideways here. So this is the whole month of January and into February. So something's going to happen with technology. And my guess is probably we get a little blip lower and then they buy them into, um, into the spring. But we'll see. All right, guys. Big analysis today. Um, hope everybody has a great trip.
trading week this week. Again, be nimble. Keep your stops in place. Wait. Be patient. Wait for the volatility to pick up. There's absolutely no no uh, problem buying or selling uh, intraday, one, two, three. As long as you keep your stops small, keep your pallets dry, that's how you're going to be successful in this low, in this low volatility environment. Have a great day, everybody.